Hey guys, hope everything's going well. You guys know the drill. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't, comment down below. All right, today I want to talk about sports cards and fistfights. People are getting involved in crazy behavior, fighting for boxes where the max profit they could probably make on a flip is maybe $50 net gain if they get lucky maybe a hundred dollars so people are fighting over this guns were involved a gun was involved in brookfield wisconsin it's actually a town or one of the towns i was thinking of moving to i think there was another town near kenosha pleasant prairie but when i heard about what happened last year in august i believe i'm like nah there's no chance i'm moving down there Anyways, getting back to this, guns were involved and, you know, arrests were made over this. And, you know, there's been rumblings that Target and Walmart are going to stop selling these cards in store. Like, why would they want to do that? And they'll probably sell online if, you know, they choose to do so, just to liquidate some inventory. Anyways... You know, it's just becoming berserk that guys in the 30s and 40s are just fighting over cards that could make them, what, 50 to to $100. And when I observe weird behavior, you know, I, you know, jot down some notes in my head that, okay, this is not what consists of a normal market. And I've been seeing a lot of other things as well that make me question just me buying cards from an investment point of view at this moment. Am I buying some cards here and there? Sure, but I'm not being aggressive. I'm being aggressive like I've told you in previous videos on the sell side. And I noticed a few things in the news the other day, or actually I read it today. The creators of Pawn Stars, I forget what channel it's on, I think they have a store in Vegas and, you know, they sell all sorts of collectibles. But the creators of the show want to create a new show revolving around sports cards. And one of the guests they want to have on is Ken Golden, who is making money hand over fist right now. And he obviously is an expert in sports cards. So they want to do something with Ken Golden. I saw another story. There was a Cubs player guy I haven't heard of. I haven't really watched that too many Cubs games this year. Or actually, I haven't watched any. I'm going to, uh, excuse me, I'm probably going to start watching baseball early June when things start to get a little more interesting. June, July. Anyways, this one Cubs player introduced these baseball card boxes to his teammates, and now all the teammates are interested in sports cards. And the article talked about how there's celebrities like LeBron James getting in on it. And we know from other articles, Kevin Durant is involved in this industry now. Starstock, he's also funding some of these other companies. I think Ken Golden's company, correct me if I'm wrong. So, you know, we're starting to see all this interest from celebrities and sure, some celebrities and athletes were buying cards before this pandemic, before the crazy run up in card prices, but they're getting, these guys are getting in when it's hot. They were not getting in when it was a slow market. You know, you had appreciation, but you didn't see crazy prices. So I'm jotting all this down. I'm like, uh, do I want to aggressively be buying? sports cards you know like i mentioned okay people are fighting over sports cards with guns now newbie celebrities athletes are getting in on it and i've also observed this in the product market as well and i touch basis in a different video it's about these uh top loaders from cardboard gold so my wife and i for e-commerce business we sold a bunch of top loaders last year and at that time the arbitrage was pretty good 
so we were able to get maybe 40 top loaders, 40 cases. So 40 cases of 25, so a thousand. I think we're able to get it from one eBay seller. I think for $65, $66 shipped, free shipping. And I think Cardboard Gold had the same prices about. I don't think we got it from Cardboard Gold then. I think we got it later on in the year from Cardboard Gold. And the prices were still relatively affordable, maybe $90 for 40. And right now we have crazy amount of inflation in the economy now. We also have these companies, I believe like Cardboard Gold and Ultra Pro, and you could also say Panini, they want to make money that sellers like me make in the secondary market. They want a piece of that pie because they know the market's hot. That's my interpretation of it. So I think Cardboard Gold, if you want to buy a case of 40 top loaders, you have to pay close to, what, $200, I believe, the last time. And I saw on Columbia Hobby Goods on eBay, I think they're selling 40 of them for 250 So a year ago, they were selling 40 cases of these for $66 about, maybe $69. I don't remember off the top of my head. And now those prices have gone up, what, 3, 4x in a matter of a year? And I don't want to pay $200 for these top loaders for 40 so about $5 for one case here. And someone may be like, oh, that's pretty cheap, $5 if you're buying in bulk. But guess what? You have to sell it at a premium and sometimes you offer free shipping and if you offer free shipping you know what is that usps free shipping like nine dollars and you have to probably sell it ten dollars and sure people are buying at ten dollars but if you probably go to an inland store you could probably get it six seven dollars you know those guys in baseball stores sports cards stores they don't make a whole lot of money off of top loaders. They probably sell it close to what they got it at. It's just an accessory. So why on earth, you know, me, why would I sell these top loaders at $10, $10.50 when not many people would want to buy it? And I'm not going to be able to sell it very quickly. You know, when I was selling it at what, seven, eight, nine dollars dollars I, I don't think i'm selling at nine dollars maybe towards the end of last year but you know you're selling seven eight dollars you know you could sell that but now it's very challenging so i noticed that okay these guys who are involved in the sports card market they want to basically cut into the profit margin of sellers like me that's fine because they're providing the initial product you know, they're sourcing the material from overseas. They have to put it in bins. They have to pay that huge bill, you know, probably hundreds of thousands of dollars if they're getting tubs worth of top loaders. So I don't blame them. I don't blame them at all. I'm just saying that, okay, I usually don't see, you usually don't see this in the sports card market. And sure, you could attribute some of these price hikes due to inflation, but not all of it's due to inflation. So I'm just looking at just a few of these things here. And in addition, these cards have gone up, what, 10x in a year, 15x, 20x, some of these graded cards. And even though the market appears to be very hot from a seller's perspective, I'm just seeing warning signs all over the board. And from, you know, an investment perspective, I said this in previous videos as well, the S&P 500 hasn't even doubled in a year. And if you look at these sports cars, they've gone up 10x. And average return on the S&P over the last, what, I don't know, 50 years has been, what, 9, 10%. So if you look at that, you're talking about 
a thousand percent return on cards where you haven't seen these returns ever in a short amount of time for many cards. Granted, some cards may have gone up crazy, but most cards haven't. I'm just looking from a risk reward return. I don't want to be involved in this market aggressively. That is sure. I'll buy some cards, but I don't want to touch it. You know, all of these things make me wary. And I know some people will be like, Hey, you could get some opportunities. If you're in a break, you could get potentially a Lawrence card and that will go for thousands of dollars. Yeah, you could do that. But what's the chance of someone pulling that card in a break? So yeah, one person put maybe three hundred, four hundred dollars, they may get a two thousand dollar card. But most people put in three hundred dollars in a break, whatever the amount is. I'm just giving an example. They may get junk and they may just get a hundred dollars worth of cards. So they're losing. Some people do breaks for the thrill, I get it. I'm not hating on that. And some good cards come out of breaks. So there is a positive aspect of breaks. That being said, there's no reason, in my opinion, to aggressively be buying sports cards right now. When you have, I wouldn't say dumb money, but I would say the new money, the new money is coming into this market, very aggressive. And, you know, they're watching a bunch of these YouTube channels and they're getting excited. You know, they have nostalgia, you know, when they're a kid, they used to buy all these cards and now they're doing this as an adult. It's fun. But 25 years ago, you know, if you had the baseball card market crash and I see the same thing happening, the overall sports card market in the next few years. But this time around, I believe that the rebound from that crash is going to be much quicker than it was in the 90s. I'm going to explain that in a different video, but I definitely will be looking at sports cards in the next few years, assuming my thesis is correct that a crash is going to occur. Anyways, guys, I want you to comment down below. And if you don't agree with me, I definitely want to hear what you're saying, what you think. And even if you agree, leave a comment down below. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll talk to you later, guys. Thank you. Bye.